Hello, dear members, dear participants, dear colleagues, be all warmly welcome. This event has interpretation in four languages, English, Turkish, French, and Spanish. You can select the language of uh, your choice in the interpretation button at the bottom of your screen. This event has subtitles in English, uh, live captioning. You can uh, also select this option at the bottom of the screen with the three dots you can see under more. You can also follow the uh, live captioning, the subtitles using the link we are now going to upload at the, at the chat. Let me introduce you to the UCLG Secretary General, Emilia Scythe, for the introductory remarks. Emilia, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Jordi Pascual, and welcome to Izmir. Uh, I know that there is people that are following us there. The music has already transported us to this beautiful city, and I am delighted to welcome you to the launch of our UCLG Culture uh, Summit, Culture Shaping the Future. We, the people, are the city. And through our beliefs, through our values and creative activities, through our culture, we shape the city of stones and dreams. That's how our Rome Charter starts. And you know, our uh, Durban Declaration also says that we, local and regional governments, are the ones that needs to safeguard the dreams and aspirations of communities. This is why the title that we are uh, considering for our um, summit of culture is so relevant for us because for UCLG, for United Cities and Local Governments, culture is not only a component of our agenda, it's critical to our, uh, to our agenda. We are not naive and we know that culture has been used very often as a divisive factor. Sometimes diversity is used like that. From our perspective, culture needs to be a unifying uh, factor. The right to culture, the access to culture, the capacity to discover, to create, to share and enjoy culture will need to be critical in the type of transformation that our world needs. And the pact for the future that our uh, ancient municipal movement is promoting will have a very, very important cultural uh, component. Understanding culture as a building block of education, of policy making, of course, of entertainment, but also very much as part of our uh, value agendas. And we cannot think of a better place to do this than Izmir. We are very, very grateful to the people of Izmir and to the municipality of Izmir uh, for uh, providing us uh, this space. The Culture Summit of UCLG is always a big event always a very important event that brings cities all over the world uh, together to, uh, to discuss these issues. And I am delighted to introduce uh, to you our president, um, Dr. Mohamed Boudra, the uh, mayor of al Hosseima, to uh, give some words uh, to you on what culture uh, represents to, uh, to us. Uh, president, the floor is yours. Merci, Emilia. Merci à notre secrétaire générale de ce Géli du Monde et à l'équipe. Donc, euh, chers collègues, c'est un plaisir de vous accueillir tous à cet événement très important de ce Géli, le lancement du Sommet de la Culture, qui se tiendra à Izmir les 9 et le 10 et le 11 septembre. L'événement d'aujourd'hui est une invitation pour tous les membres de CGLU à se familiariser avec les thèmes du sommet. Une invitation à apprendre et à se préparer ensemble. Ce sommet est le quatrième et fait suite à ce que nous avons organisé à Bilbao en mars 2015, à Jeju en mai 2017 et à Buenos Aires en avril 2019. 
je souhaite à cette occasion saluer les représentants de ces villes pour l'excellent travail accompli. Le sommet de culture de Cégelu est le principal point de rencontre à l'échelle mondiale pour les villes et les territoires. Les gouvernements locaux et les acteurs clés engagés dans la mise en œuvre efficace des politiques et programmes sur la culture et la durabilité. Cette année 2021, le sommet se déroule dans un contexte exceptionnel. Nous n'avions jamais affronté tous ensemble une pandémie mondiale. La pandémie a mis en évidence l'importance des services de base, l'urgence de rendre les vaccins disponibles pour tout le monde, dans toutes les parties du monde, et la nécessité de focaliser nos sociétés sur les soins et la solidarité. La pandémie a également modifié la dimension culturelle du développement. D'une part, elle a montré le besoin profond de culture. Les gens se sont tournés vers la culture pour, for pour renforcer le sentiment d'appartenance aux communautés et aux villes, inventant de nouvelles formes de participation, reconnaissant ce qui nous unit et créant le, de nouveaux sens de solidarité. D'autre part, la pandémie a également montré l'interrelation entre les politiques culturelles et les politiques liées à l'éducation, à l'égalité de genre, à la santé, aux inégalités, à l'urbanisme, aux espaces publics et à l'innovation. Enfin, et surtout, la crise a révélé que les systèmes de protection des travailleurs culturels sont précaires et doivent être améliorés dans le monde entier. Il est clair que cette crise à laquelle nous sommes confrontés ne peut être affronté uniquement par des mesures sanitaires ou économiques. Mais nous devons faire appel à la créativité des communautés et placer la culture comme antidote, antidote contre les effets de la pandémie. C'est une partie incontestable de la solution au problème de l'humanité. Comme indiqué dans notre manifeste, l'avenir de la culture, approuvé lors de notre congrès de Durban, en novembre 2019, et comme indiqué dans le décalogue de la présidence de CGLU pour l'après-Covid-19, post-Covid-19. Le décalogue identifie également la culture comme un élément crucial de la reprise et comme un élément clé pour lutter contre les inégalités à travers le développement des programmes sur le patrimoine, la créativité, la diversité, et la mise en œuvre des droits culturels au niveau local et régional. Nous sommes convaincus que les droits culturels sont fondamentaux pour nos libertés et notre développement et que les droits culturels doivent éclairer les politiques publiques des villes et gouvernements locaux à long terme. Nous sommes les plus proches de la population. Par conséquent, nous sommes ceux qui ont une grande responsabilité pour ne le laisser personne de côté. La charte d'Europe approuvée par notre Conseil mondial en novembre 2020 est un excellent document à cet égard et que nous devons utiliser. Lorsque Cégélu affirme que la culture est, la quatre, est le quatrième pilier du développement durable, c'est parce que nous voulons que les questions culturelles soient au centre du débat et parce que nous sommes convaincus que les communautés, acteurs et agents culturels doivent prendre l'initiative de ce débat. En fait, le moteur central de la culture est le besoin de comprendre qui nous sommes, comment nous nous relions et ce que nous devons faire ensemble, surtout en ces moments de crise et de changement d'époque. C'est un processus qui nous interpelle tous en tant qu'êtres humains. Ainsi, dans une large perspective culturelle, la crise nous interroge sur les dialogues d'une portée plus profonde sur la relation humanité-nature, humanité-planète, sur la recherche et les preuves scientifiques, sur le temps et les ressources que nous consacrons à la coopération et à la solidarité, sur notre capacité à penser les blessures du passé, sur notre volonté de construire des villes 
et des sociétés créatives. Enfin, je souhaite féliciter le maire d'Izmir, mon cher collègue Toul Sawyer, pour son grand leadership et son implication de la préparation de sommet. Izmir, ville conviviale de cette mare nostrum, perle de la Méditerranée, carrefour des cultures et des civilisations et des peuples, cher maire Sawyer, Sawyer nous serons ravis d'échanger et apprendre lors de ce lancement et ravis d'organiser le sommet culture de Séjunu dans votre charmante ville les 9, 10, 11 septembre. Je vous remercie toutes et tous. Muchísimas gracias, señor presidente. Yo creo que lo ha dicho muy alto y muy claro. La cultura es una, una parte muy crítica de nuestra agenda como municipalistas y creemos que es también un instrumento transformador muy crítico. If we manage to uh, make use of an opportunity like this one, like the one that the pandemic has given us, a crisis is always an opportunity, um, we will need to think out of the box. And we have many tools that we are putting to the service to, of our membership to ensure that thinking outside of the box is what we do. The uh, Rome Charter is, is one of them. And this process towards the Izmir Summit is another important contribution in that uh, direction. So I'm now delighted to give uh, the floor uh, to uh, Mayor uh, Tok Sawyer of Izmir, the host of the UCLG uh, 2021 Culture Summit. Mayor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emilia. Dear President Boudra, dear mayors, dear guests, a very warm welcome to everyone. I'm extremely happy to see each one of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. COVID-19, along with the climate crisis and losses of biodiversity, threatens sustainable development. These are our common challenges without borders. In this respect, global solidarity and sustainable urbanization is crucial in facing these mega challenges. Cultural vitality is one of the four pillars of sustainability, along with economic prosperity, social equity, and environmental responsibility. In the last two years, Izmir saw a large forest fire, a tsunami, an earthquake, a drought, and a severe flood all in a very short period of time. We leaned on culture to bounce back because it is the lifeblood of our local communities. Culture is in every aspect of our daily life. Culture links our history with our future. This is what makes us unique. Our creative expression helps define who we are and who we might become. Culture provides important social and economic benefits for our cities. It improves our learning, increases tolerance, and creates opportunities to come together with others. Culture enhances our quality of life and increases our well being for both individuals and communities. Culture is important to the vitality of all local communities. It helps to build social capital. It's a glue that holds communities together. By bringing people together, cultural activities create social solidarity and cohesion and enhance dignity and tolerance. Cultural engagement also plays a key role in poverty reduction and strategies to support communities at risk. Culture helps cities develop compelling 
city narratives, and distinctive brands. Culturally rich districts also enhance competitiveness by attracting talent and businesses. Cultural heritage is also a key factor in rural development, supporting tourism and community renewal. We are in a new period of knowledge and creativity driven growth. Economic opportunities created by cultural and creative industries, particularly for young people, have been on our greater importance in this time of transition. Knowledge-based economies favor ideas to stimulate innovation, and they develop specialized services and highly customized products. We envision Izmir as a city of arts, design, and innovation, a city that nurtures biocultural diversity, eco-friendly production, and equitable distribution models. In this respect, we want to strengthen transborder relations by promoting cultural interactions among our communities at sub-national, national, and international levels. These cultural interactions can make our cities more prosperous, democratic, inclusive, just, equal, safe, and sustainable. In the UCLG Culture Summit in Izmir, cities of the world will work together to connect culture and urban resilience. We will exchange our experiences and ideas to foster cultural policies on heritage, creativity, diversity, and knowledge, which we are key for local sustainable development. We will promote culture as the fourth pillar of development and a core component of global solidarity. In Izmir, we will meet, share, and create together for the future we want. In this respect, we will work in line with the Rome Charter and promote the right to participate in cultural life as a condition for a better society. We will invest together in cultural policies. We will strengthen our tools for dialogue, coexistence, and freedom. This exchange requires your experiences and expertise. Also, the active participation of your communities. We will debate an open governance of culture at local, national, and international levels. We will promote human creativity, human experience, progress, and innovation. In this way, we will work to make cities and local governments more active in implementing the 2030 agenda. We invite all actors related to culture, from local authorities to cultural institutions, from experts to citizens, to the fourth UCLG Culture Summit this September. See you in Izmir, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Sawyer, for these inspiring uh, words that really complement uh, also Allah. the message of our uh, president, indeed, who is greeting you uh, here as well. Thank you to the over uh, 250 participants that we have uh, in this um, in this launch. Uh, I would like to uh, pay a special tribute as well to our uh, section, the UCLG section in MEWA. I see the Secretary General with us, but also uh, the President of uh, the MEWA Culture and Tourism uh, Committee. You will hear from both of them very, very soon. But now we want to give you a little piece of Izmir, just a little bit of a teaser so that you get inspire and go to Insmir uh, in September. Here it is. Izmir Harika.
harika. İzmir harika. İzmir harika. Harika. İzmir harika. İzmir harika. İzmir harika. İzmir harika. İzmir harika. Sorry, I lost my sound there. A big applause to this uh, to this video. Mayor Sawyer always says that he's not only the mayor of the people of Izmir, he's also the mayor of the nature of Izmir. And you have given to us the whole soul of Izmir. It certainly you have opened our appetite to go and visit you there, uh, mayor. There will be more videos during this session that will give us a taste of what is, Izmir really uh, means uh, to, to all of us. Uh, so uh, keep paying attention. Thank you very very much again uh, to the people of Izmir for welcoming us. We look forward to being with you very, very soon. So now allow me to give the floor to Serhan Ada. He's an Associated Professor of Heads of Arts and Cultural Management Department and Director of the Cultural Policy and Management Research Center at the um, Istanbul Bilgi University. He's a known uh, global expert. Uh, that we feel very privileged to work with. Um, he's a great activist uh, for, for culture. He's a great uh, advocate uh, on the promotion of culture and what it can mean in transformation. And he's now very involved in the work that we are doing with Izmir as a leading city in the new CLG uh, Culture uh, Committee. So Serhan, it is a true pleasure to have you with us. And now we are in your hands, up to you. Muchas gracias, Emilia Sainz. And uh, let me say that, uh, first of all, I'm honored to host this conversation, being born in Izmir as being an Izmirli. And second, I am extremely delighted to have and to welcome two distinguished guests for our talk today. I will start with Professor Lourdes Aritzpe. She's an anthropologist born in Mexico and was a member of the World Commission on Culture and Development. And as the Assistant Director General for Culture at UNESCO, she contributed to the elaboration of the International Convention on Intangible Heritage and took an active part in the preparatory work for the future declaration and convention on cultural diversity. Professor Arithbe is now spending a sabbatical year in New York, working at the Center for Culture and Ethnicity of Columbia University. Professor Arithbe, benvenida. Our second guest today will be Professor Pierluigi Sacco. Pierluigi Sacco is an economist born in Pescara, Italy. 
And he now works as a professor of culture economics at Ulm University in Milan. He is serving as senior advisor at OECD for entrepreneurship, small and medium enterprises, regions and cities. And he also worked as a special advisor to the EU commissioner to education, culture, youth and sport. Professor Sacco, benvenuto. I would now, uh, before starting our questions and going to our, into our talk, I will also suggest those of our guests and colleagues who would like to ask questions, please to type them in our chat box so that we will follow and uh, um, also respectively ask them to our guests. Professor Arifbe, I would like to start with you. Let us start with the idea of culture and development or better culture for development. In the beginning of 90s, you were actively involved in the works of World Commission on Culture and Development, which ended with a report on 1996. What were the practical results of the report? Now that we are beginning the decade of action in the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, we witness a continuous endeavor trying to make culture an integral part of this global frame. Is there progress since 1996 to our day? There has been. There has been enormous... Uh, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, right. There has been enormous progress. But let me say, when we began our work with the World Commission on Cultural Development, under the directorship of uh, Javier Perez de Cuellar, Secretary General of the UN. It was very difficult to write the report. There were 40 of us from different countries, different na nations, and uh, with very different backgrounds. And simply uh, arriving at a consensus at the end was not easy, but we achieved it. We achieved it by emphasizing diversity. Therefore, the title of the report is our creative diversity. Because it was not only meant to say, oh yes, we're all very different, we all know that. But being different is an advantage. We are creative and therefore we can advance. Humans have evolved during the millennium because of this diversity. That was the first one. However, uh, we also emphasize that this diversity simply could not go ahead on its own. We needed a framework, and the framework is the global solidarity of humans, in the sense that we have the same genes and we have the same evolution, even though we are very diverse. That was the second point. And I will not go through the other chapters, which were interesting on the media, on heritage, on women and development, which has become a very important point. And just mention that we made 10 recommendations. Guess which recommendation was the best accepted around the world. It was the first one, where we uh, suggested that the United Nations create a program of volunteers to work in safeguarding cultural heritage, especially archeological heritage. That had an, an enormous success. Young people from many, many countries um, were interested in the program. It, it is still ongoing. We had another nine recommendations. I won't go through them, but they were equally interesting. Thank you very much, Professor Arispe. I think that a team of volunteers will always be needed in our works. Now, I would like to turn to Professor Sacco. And uh, as we are now in 2021, and we have to uh, also recall that the world of 2021 is not the world of 2019. In the end of 2019, when news were coming from Wuhan in China, that a new virus was affecting the population of that city, no one thought this critter will engender a pandemic changing lives on the planet. The city you live in, Professor Sacco, Milan, together with two other Lombardian cities, Bergamo and Brescia, were struck by the pandemic immediately after. What was the impact on the cultural life in the city? How did the artists, 
and cultural professionals reacted and how their work has, has evolved since. Thank you, Saran. This is, of course, a very important question. I think that uh, in this case, what happened in Milan and also in the, in the closed cities of Brescia and Bergamo, and it's interesting to point out that as a reaction to this particular crisis, Brescia and Bergamo have been proclaimed as Italian capitals of culture for 2023. So there will be a special program in some sense to help these cities reboot from the point of view of culture and creative production. So this is a very, very important, I think, initiative from uh, the Italian Ministry of Culture also because generally the title of Italian Capital of Culture is a competition, but in this particular case, it has been assigned to the two cities together as a sign uh, in some sense of uh, the hope for a restart. Well, as you can imagine, the impact has been dramatic. There has been uh, uh, almost a collapse of course, of the, of the public cultural life. All the institutions have been shut down sometimes for one year or even more now. And there is, of course, a growing preoccupation that not all institutions will be able to reopen, especially the smaller ones. And of course, there has been, as in other cities throughout the world, a very, very important negative impact, especially on the small cultural producers and the freelancers. So, of course, we have been uh, supported by various measures. Uh, adopted at various levels from the national level to the local, regional, or even city level, as in other cities throughout the world. But clearly, this uh, emergency support is not enough to really rethink a new cycle of growth for the sector. My personal guess, but I'm seeing this uh, mounting as a very, very interesting new political uh, cultural policy agenda, is that uh, the future wave of rebuilding of cultural and creative sectors will be most likely very much connected to the new emerging societal challenges that face us in this post-pandemic cycle. Think, for example, of the well-being crisis that is now striking everybody, like in a sort of post-traumatic social shock syndrome. The role of culture has been already fundamental throughout the pandemic, for example, in helping people maintain their mood during the lockdown, think of music, for, for example, or uh, streaming of, uh, of a vis visual content. But, so this is one point. The other point will be rebuilding public spaces. Today we have uh, important challenges in this regard. For example, central business districts, but even retail spaces will be modified by this new scenario. And in many cases, some spaces that were previously occupied need not be reoccupied in the post-pandemic cycle. So how to repurpose these particular spaces? And then of course, social cohesion, of course, uh, one of the most serious consequences of the pandemic crisis has been the social disconnection. The fact that for so many people, the web of social contact has been disrupted or seriously undermined. So how can culture help uh, communities and single individuals rebuild this network? So I think that this is an enormous scope for new action, innovative action uh, for culture and creative production. And I really hope that uh, cities throughout the world understand that supporting cultural policies in this regard is fundamental for a successful and effective reconstruction in the post-pandemic phase. Thank you very much, Professor Sacco. And it is a good sign and uh, reconfirming that culture will be shaping the future that Brescia and Bergamo have been proclaimed as cities of culture. There is, or rather was, Professor Arispe, almost a tacit understanding to label our era as Anthropocene, the era of the human. You also referred at some point to Capitalocene, the era of the capital. The recent pandemic revealed itself to be a sudden breakdown in the system. Can you briefly explain about the Anthropocene you recently also carried out a field research on it, of ethnography before and after COVID-19 in the village of Tepoztlan, right outside Mexico City. Can you tell us about your findings as well? That's a, a very uh, open and important question, Mr. Serhan, thank you. Uh, on, on the first question, I, I would like to say that um, I have, I have written on culture in the way that it has shaped human history. And here, I think you have said that 
The culture will create the future, just as it has created us through history. But what we have to understand that we are facing these uncertainties, as Mr. Sacco has said, of the pandemic. These uncertainties have been created by us. We have destroyed forests, destroyed sustainable agriculture, destroyed soil, and destroyed the biome of our own bodies. And because of this, we have a pandemic that is affecting every single body on the planet. But if we humans created these uncertainties, we will be able to find a way out. The way out is cumulative knowledge. This is a knowledge that is created at the individual level or at universities and in many, many countries coming together so that we can find solutions to our present crisis. And it is very important to understand this because I believe we can self-organize to battle against this pandemic. And I'm seeing it in this local study of a community that we just did on how local people perceive the pandemic. And the first thing to note is, of course, they are shocked. We are all shocked that this could happen in human history. But they immediately find solutions. In Tepoztlan, you find that many things will have to change. They cannot continue as before. For example, the balance between uh, the, the local economy and sustainable agriculture. We have to take care of the forests mm -hmm. and sustainability of the local economy. A new uh, relationship must develop between Mexico City, which is very near this community, and the community itself, because there is constant connection between the two and people realize this. What is interesting in the uh, study that we did is that the people in the community have acquired a new awareness of how they themselves can take things in their own hands and provide, as Mr. Sacco has said, new policies, new ways of doing things. And the, the quickest way to do it is through culture. And let me tell you that I learned this when I was very young, when I was 20 years old, and I chose to come to Istanbul to live with a Turkish family. And there I discovered that intellectual achievement was, uh, was universal for many, many cultures. That uh, I, because I lived in a family where the father was a scholar of Turkish history. And I had to speak German with him because that's what he spoke. My own mother was Swiss. I also learned from the mother who only speak, spoke French. Uh, I could speak with her. I could see the elegance and the kindness of Turkish women. And with the young girl who was my, my companion there in the, in the house, the vivacity and curiosity I could see were also universal. This is how I think I became a, an anthropologist because culture is the one thing that all peoples in the world have. Different, diverse, but on the same basis. And this is how I believe we will overcome this pandemic, but we have to be very conscious of how to self-organize. Thank you very much. I mean, I will have to ask you a question about convivencia. <laughs> conviviality, I mean, in my uh, further question. Uh, Professor Sacco, uh, 2021 is also the International Year of Creative Economy for Sustainable Development, declared by the General Assembly of the UN. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the life itself has become more and more digitalized, as all cultural expressions and artistic production have struggled to cope with this unexpected challenge. What could be the effects and the aftershocks of the pandemic on cultural industries and the creative economy? Thank you, Saran. This is a pretty stimulating uh, question. And uh, of course, it's very complex to answer and uh, we don't have all the answers at the moment. But uh, I am actually at the moment uh, coordinating a scientific project that is exactly 
uh, working a European project that is exactly focusing on the impact of digital uh, platforms on the culture and creative participation. And uh, what's, uh, what's coming out of this is really surprising. For example, one study that we made on museums has shown that a completely new uh, wave of uh, potential uh, audiences and, uh, are uh, approaching museums through the digital channels in the post-pandemic phase. This is interesting because we tend to forget that for many people, museums are still very intimidating places. They are places that in some sense fit only to the people who are already part of the club, so to speak, people who already feel entitled to participate. The digital access is creating a new form of a direct, I would say digital arms length kind of relationship for a new kind of public. And it's very likely that after the pandemic crisis is over, hopefully as soon as possible, these new potential audiences will be encouraged to also access physically the museum with a completely different attitude. So this is just an example. I think that uh, it's an example that can escalate in many different regards. So clearly the digital has not simply been a temporary solution, a buffer to solve the problem of lack of physical presence. The digital is creating new possibilities and the future will clearly be a hybrid future which the digital dimension and the physical dimension will of course cooperate. And I'm pretty optimistic about that. For example, one of the fields in which there has been more preoccupation has been tourism, which of course is, is deeply related to culture and creative production. And generally the idea is that uh, since there is now the possibility, let's say of digital access, for example, to museums, people will uh, be less willing to access physically the places, the heritage cities and so on. That's absolutely not the case because generally what happens in heritage cities is that you go there, but having very little awareness of what's there, you generally like, let's say, like uh, in some sense, I would say provocatively like sheep, you just go through the same places in the same way. And generally you have a very stereotypical experience of the city, but if you have the possibility to previously explore digitally what, for example, heritage is, or as it happening today increasingly, you have the possibility, for example, to digitally connect to local scouts, people who can introduce you to the local cultural milieu, to the local social life. When you arrive there, you are interested in different kinds of experiences. You are not simply going for the usual places and doing the usual things, which means that we can solve through this new synthesis of physical digital presence, at least to some extent, even uh, huge problems like over tourism in heritage cities. So I, I think that this is a major opportunity, but what is crucially important at this stage is that cultural institutions understand that this new opportunity also requires a very open-minded attitude, not a defensive attitude. It's a moment to innovate, to experiment, even to make mistakes, because you can never really experiment and innovate without making mistakes, but making mistakes in an intelligent way, understanding that these new digital possibilities are really opening up possibilities and understanding that the long-term consequence of the digital, the most important one, will be to create an ecosystem of co-creation. So people are increasingly willing to participate in the conversation, not simply to listen or to applaud the performance of, of creative professionals. It's extremely important to think of an inclusive uh, ecosystem in which everybody is able to contribute to this global narration. And uh, Professor Arispe already reminded us of the very long-term perspective of why culture is important for humans and how important it is for humans to participate actively in this narration. And this give, uh, brings me to my last point. In this particular sense, digital access should be thought of a basic human right because uh, you cannot really participate in this new ecosystem if you don't have the possibility to access all the knowledge resources, all the learning resources that are today enabled by the digital. So one of the real problems today is ensuring a fair digital access, especially to the most disenfranchised and most marginalized part of our society. Thank you very much. We will most probably need to complete uh, digital access with digital participation at some point. And it is obvious that 
biodiversity and cultural diversity are different, but one, I mean, as digital and physical culture are different, but one. Professor Arispe, the American sociologist, Donna Haraway, who also wrote a very important and relevant book to our times, The Cyber Manifesto, and the French philosopher, Paul Virilio, qualified our times as the times of vertiginous acceleration, an acceleration which now turned out to be a complete stop. Is there a way to accommodate acceleration to community life? Now I come to convivencia. What role could convivencia, conviviality play in preserving and promoting the cultural dimension of development at a local level while protecting cultural diversity, which is necessary to the world? Uh, again, this is a very complex question, but I'll be very glad to give you a succinct answer as far as I can, can give. Um, I will go back to your previous question about why the Anthropocene. This has been proposed because we have become so powerful as humans. Uh, we are an anthropogenic force, as it is called now, as strong as an earthquake and can have changed the planet as much. And we have become, as Mr. Seko very well said, an ecosystem. But at this moment, it is an ecosystem that is unbalanced because we don't know how to combine the, the virtual and the real and how to combine the knowledge that history has given us and the new knowledge that is coming up from the pandemic. So going back to convivencia, when I say cumulative knowledge as the factor that develops societies and makes them evolve, this cumulative knowledge implies leaving some knowledge behind and creating new knowledge. This can be best done in the quickest way through convivencia. And this is why cities are such a key place for creating new knowledge because being so close together, all of us living in cities, the connection, the discussion, the negotiation of terms of values is very, very quick. It is accelerated, as you say. And in being accelerated, all that we need, but we do need that, is new rules for the connections that are being created in the virtual world. Societies came about in the last five centuries that we now live in through very precise and complex negotiations of values, laws, and purposeful action. We need to do this in a much quicker way in the cities through experimentation. And this experimentation always has to be done in groups. It is collective action. So we need creativity, which is the individual having an autonomy to think and to act in order to experiment. And we need that individual to communicate with others in the cities, in the communities, so that very quickly we arrive at a consensus. I think we are at a point now where the shock of the pandemic is making many, many groups uh, face each other in conflict. And this we have to resolve. We have to find new rules so that instead of coming into conflict, these groups will look for consensus. And this is what we now have to build. And I believe the cities are the locus where it will be created. Thank you very much. Professor Sacco, UCLG recently adopted a decalogue for the post COVID-19 era. And one of the 10 action lines is culture as an antidote for the crisis. Crisis in plural. And another one is the creation of an interurban system, which reads, and I quote, an international system built on the force of cities, local and regional governments that learn and define policies together, supported by strong associations that will allow scaling up actions, end quote. How can cultural 
actors become more engaged with challenges related to health or environmental issues? Thank you, Saran. That's a really a fundamental issue today. We have to understand that uh, there is already substantial amount of research and experimentation in place in which uh, both from the point of view of environmental sustainability and from the point of view of health and well-being, there are uh, wealths of, uh, a wealth of different experiences uh, happening today. The problem is that there is still a deeply ingrained uh, skepticism by policymakers about the fact that culture can make a difference in these particular fields. And the reason is that there is a conventional identification of culture with leisure with something that has, has not really to do with the fundamental survival challenges of humans. This is, by the way, completely wrong from my social historical point of view, because of course, the human culture has developed exactly to solve the problems of the livelihood of men, although we have largely forgotten this, but also because now we have an enormous amount of evidence about uh, how this is happening, and especially now. For example, this has to do with the relationship with behavioral change. It's extremely difficult, for example, to change attitudes of people. So if people keep on consuming and using, for example, uh, I mean, for example adhering to high, very high levels of material consumption, how can you be environmentally sustainable? That's impossible. So for example, one of the big challenges of the future is moving from a consumption that is focused on objects to a consumption that is focused on experiences. And in this shift, it's obvious that culture can play a major role. Or think, for example, as we know today, what is the relationship between the pro-social attitude of people, for example, when they have to carry out waste recycling and their own cultural background. We know today that the best predictor to understand who will be more, uh, more uh, let's say, scrupulously doing their own waste recycling are people with high levels of cultural participation, not people with high education or high income, high cultural participation. So really culture is a way to change human attitudes and dispositions towards crucial aspects. And this clearly has to do with the environment and this clearly has to do with health. So what can be the role of uh, cities networks in this particular sense? It's clearly at this moment, developing pilot experiences and exchanging pilot experiences to create a global network of influence also in terms of sharing good practices and sharing the results of experimentation. Clearly, the urban context is the crucial playground today for this kind of experimentation because clearly most of the, the, the, the environmental dilemmas but also several, not most, but several or the mental health dilemmas today have to do with the transformation of urban environments. I also stress that it's very important that city maintain a strong relationship with their hinterlands, because today also the new dialectic between city and countryside is extremely important. And for cities in the post-pandemic scenario, you cannot uh, conceive uh, the urban environment as an island. You really have to see it again as organically connected to the countryside and to the rural and marginal areas, because today we can only, uh, in some sense, overcome the crisis that we are facing if we do it integrally, looking at the territory in its uh, own uh, com uh, complexity, overall complexity. But from this point of view, and this is my last comment on this, from this point of view, the urban scale is ideal because certain experimentation is difficult to carry out at the national level, is a, to, to a big scale. And sometimes even the regional level is very, very challenging, but the urban level is perfect for this. So cities can become the laboratories for innovation and in particular for social innovation relating to the new, so, so these new societal challenges like health and global climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you also for recalling us that the mental and physical health are different, but one, especially in times of lockdown and distanciation, I mean, definitely. Professor Arithme, I'm coming to my question on the future, which is our theme. As our overarching theme in the summit to take place in Izmir from 9th to 11th of September, is culture shaping the future? What could be the role of culture in building new meaning or meanings towards the future? What are the key actions to be taken by cities and local governments? 
Thank you for a very challenging question. Um, the role of culture is the same as it has always been in history. It makes people who they are. It shapes the personality. It shapes the way of connecting socially and psychologically. And it shapes a world view. This will have to change very quickly because the pandemic has changed our worldview and we still have not arrived at a consensus, both in cities, both in nations, both on the world level of exactly what has changed, what can continue and what cannot continue. <clears throat> so I would strongly emphasize <coughs> that culture, excuse me, <clears throat> that culture not, not be thought of as an object, as Mr. Sacco clearly said, it's not an object, it is an experience. And this experience is also always interpersonal and always social. And therefore, culture in the first place will have to create children and new generations that are different. They will have a wider worldview as they are already having. And the cities, as Mr. Sacco said, as laboratories of experience will, of course, show that the world is one, as you have said. How to do this? First of all, to make us understand that convivencia has several levels of interrelationships. And each of them will have to develop new rules because there are certain rules that can no longer be followed. We cannot specify exactly what, because it will depend on people in the, in the cities and in the communities linked to the cities that have to decide exactly what they choose to keep and what they choose to change. And governments are very important in helping in this consensus. In the study that we did in this town of Tepoztlan, we found that suddenly the local government took on a new role because they became the conveners of a wide discussion in the community of what to do. And they became more arbiters of this discussion than ever before. So culture has a very important role in constructing, building a new understanding of policy and of politics. And we don't have too much time because sustainability is upon us. And so all these changes in worldview have to be carried out very quickly. Thank you for your emphasis uh, that cultural policy goes hand in hand with cultural politics. So also uh, the interdependency between a healthy city life, urban life and a healthy rural life. I mean, they both need each other for uh, shaping the future. Professor Sacco, UCLG's pact for future is based on the trivet of solidarity, equality, and accountable institutions. How these three axes could come together with culture to sort of shape the future. Can you also tell us about the key actions for cities and local governments? But as Professor Arispe already mentioned, culture can be, and it was, was mentioned also before, of course, culture can be, can have a very different um, outcomes, let's say, on human interaction. We need to cultivate that part of culture that is really developing our uh, social intelligence and our capacity to empathize. This has to do very much with this perspective of convivencia that I find particularly stimulating. And this also means that, uh, again, I mean, uh, human nature is neither inherently good or inherently bad, is how we cultivate it. And uh, culture offers us an incredible opportunity to cultivate certain types of social skills and certain types of dispositions. From this point of view, it's extremely important today to cope with cultural diversity as a resource. Cultural diversity for many people is a threat because something that comes from a different cultural background is difficult to understand. 
you don't understand why people say certain things or they act in a certain way or they use certain gestures. And this, of course, troubles me and creates a defensive attitude. But insofar as I, I train myself, I, I, I, I, in some sense, I grow accustomed to this experience of diversity. This not, no longer is a threat, but it really becomes an incredible resource to stimulate my intellectual curiosity to develop new skills. But this needs practice. So what is really important today is to cultivate a new uh, cultural cohesion strategy in which uh, really we have a possibility to, to experiment with cultural diversity. It's not incidental that generally the more xenophobic regions in Europe are the regions in which cultural diversity is the least, not where there is a lot of cultural diversity. Because uh, once we are accustomed to diversity, diversity becomes a resource. So the point is solidarity, in an increasingly intercultural and an increasingly complex uh, social world, like the one we live in, is something that has to be cultivated. And it's, it's not simply that uh, something that has to be invoked or just required because of some uh, superior moral code. It's a social attitude that has to be developed. I, don't, I cannot think of any other policy area in which you can develop systematically these attitudes as you can do with cultural participation. So it's extremely important that the social policymakers understand that culture can be the most important ally today to build a truly cohesive intercultural and multicultural society. Thank you for that, Professor Sacco. I think it is not a pure coincidence, as Emilia Sainz cited, that during the pandemic, another voice came out from Rome, another city hit by COVID-19 last year as the Rome Charter 2020, which starts like we the people are the city. And I'm quite sure that the people of Izmir will be delighted to welcome all of you physically in September. And for me, I was very much excited to have uh, this talk as a taste for the, let's say, summit to take place in September. Uh, I try to see if we have any questions. Uh, the question uh, is uh, how communities in Kaunas, Lithuania can respond to a city government that does not want to dialogue about future urban planning. This is a very specific question. If, mm, any one of you would like to respond, you are welcome. It is not an easy question, I have to confess. <laughs> uh, that dialogue, of course, is always, uh, is always complex. Konos, by the way, is going to be the European capital of culture uh, very soon. I think that, uh, you know, institutional dialogue, uh, it's, uh, it's Again, it's a complex matter, but I think uh, it's important to find, uh, to find the right channels. I, I cannot enter, of course, into the specific details of this, uh, particular, uh, this particular situation, but I think that uh, uh, if there, are, there is a, a positive agenda from the point of view of concrete things to be done or concrete uh, aspects on which to, to, to, to create an active dialogue, I think it's difficult that a, that a public administration would deny this, especially if it is going to be the European capital of culture. So what I can do is to encourage from this point of view to work especially on a positive agenda of things to be done that could be shared and, uh, and discussed publicly with the, with the institution. Well, Professor Sacco, Professor Arispe, I think Professor Arispe has the last word before I give the floor. Uh, very quickly, I will say that this is why democracy is so important because it is democratic forces that can stop the hierarchies, the existing hierarchies that do not allow for the creation of a new convivencia, a new worldview as to the future. And I think there's a shift in the way that power is being understood in the world today uh, through decoloniality studies, through the mobilization of grassroots organization, through the mobilization of culturally different groups. There is a new democratic wave coming up and has been reinforced by COVID or we hope will be reinforced 
by actions against the COVID-19 pandemic so that the concept itself of power will no longer be colonial, uh, patriarchal, uh, traditional, but power will be in the hands of those who want to change for the better and change towards sustainability and a better world. Professor Arispe, Professor Sacco, thank you very much for your exceptional contributions. As we are into the questions, I would like to pass and give the floor to uh, Jordi Pascual, the coordinator of UCLG Culture Committee. Jordi? Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for this wonderful conversation, uh, Dr. Ada Serhan, dear Serhan, Dr. Arizpe, dear Lourdes, Dr. Sacco, dear Pierluigi. We have also questions in the questions and answers window. And as we still have three minutes to go, let me generalize some of the questions. Also, saying that any question you, you have, please, we will uh, address that question in Izmir in the summit. Uh, this is uh, just a two hour event, but I have selected two questions. Uh, one for uh, Dr. Arizpe on the intangible cultural, cultural heritage. Can you summarize in, in one minute why is so important for urban life to protect, to promote, the intangible urban uh, heritage, the intangible heritage. And a question to Pierluigi Sacco on the LGBTIA plus communities. Are there specific cultural policies uh, addressing this, this community? Uh, can you elaborate a bit on that in one minute? Thank you. In one minute, when I arrived at UNESCO, the uh, World Heritage Program was focused only on archaeological and material heritage. And I worked with many people from many countries, especially in Japanese, Japan, Asia, Europe, to create the idea that heritage is also the intangible that we carry within us. We are the kinds of imagined communities that we are given as children the stories that tell us what happened in the past and how we should act towards the future. This is intangible and it goes with many of the cultural practices, the museums, as Professor Sacco said, the dances, the music, the art especially. Art is the place where the communication can come to consensus and therefore we have to safeguard uh, intangible cultural heritage. We're doing this in Mexico. There has been a very successful program in Mexico. And let me say that Mexico City especially has excelled in the programs that they have to safeguard the, uh, the culture of people in the barrios, in the uh, different areas of Mexico City connecting to the communities. So it, it is very important that for the future, we keep this intangible heritage but we have to create a new one through digital means, as Professor Sarko said. And concerning policies for the LGBTQ plus community, uh, I'm particularly pleased to report that the city of London, for example, during the pandemic crisis had a special policy line to support venues that were references for this community. I think that this is crucial for the future because uh, uh, today we are really experimenting a, a new enormous possibility of uh, human development and growth by, and of course this is also challenging or deeply ingrained again, uh, conservative mentalities, but fortunately for the first time, we are starting to build societies that are also truly inclusive towards people with different sexual orientations and culture can be an extremely, I would say the fundamental probably platform to create a new mentality for this. So supporting this particular policies, I think is today uh, one of the key issues for the future. Thank you very much, Dr. Arizpe. Thank you very much, Dr. Sacco. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Serhan Ada. In the program that we are shaping together with this Metropolitan Municipality, both questions, the how intangible heritage and policies for LGBTQ, LGBTIAQ plus communities have 
a, a slot in the in the program, and we will discuss about these issues certainly in Izmir in September. Now it is a pleasure to give the floor to Onur Eriuche in Izmir, special advisor of the mayor, for the next slot on the messages from Izmir to the world. Tonight, Onur, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Jordi, Ashkanam, everyone. Um, in this section, we will bring your screen a synth from Izmir. The first contribution is from Gazapism, an angry rap singer who expresses the feeling of frustrated youth in Izmir and in Turkey. Here we go, we watch it. Türkiye'de doğuda doğmuş ve batıda büyümüş bir müzisyen olarak ve bu arada kalmışlığı sonuna kadar hissedip kendisini İzmir'e ait hisseden bir müzisyen olarak bugün karşınızda olmaktan çok gururluyum. İzmir tarihi boyunca hep göç almış, farklı milletlerden, farklı kesimlerden insanların bir araya gelerek yaşadığı ve bu kozmopolit durumun sanata pek çok katkı sağladığı bir şehir. Ancak ne yazık ki bugünlerde sessiziz, tüm Türkiye gibi. Sanat acılardan bahsederken ülkemizde herhangi bir acı yaşandığında bugüne kadar susturulan ilk şey hep müzik oldu. Bugün yine evrensel bir durumun içerisindeyken ve yine müzik susturulmuşken size daha önce, yıllar önce yazdığım bir şarkıyı söylemek istiyorum. Kafam karışıyor düşününce fazla yoksa ben de biliyorum. Bu şekilde böyle olmaz. Öyle olmaz, böyle olmaz, nasıl olacak deyip bunu yazıyorsak bize rahat bırak anla. Biz bu zamanları boş harcadık ve hatta öndeki bir on seneye de kan sıçrattık kesin. Neyse zaten onlar böyle dinliyorlar, şarkıları bölmüyorlar. Yalan kim ya fizik. Kafam karışıyor düşününce sorma bir şey onlar için. Fazla cazipken karanlık ben aydınlık aradım. Belalıydı yalnızlık. El altından albüm satıp en azından yaşadık. Yoksul ve düşkünü anlatmaya yetmiyordu literatür. Jargonu arabeskler ötelendi kime küfür bu aykırış ahmak. Onlar senin olmamanı istiyorlar burada. Olacak. Çünkü içi boşaltıldı bütün kavramların, uyuştular en kuytu köşelerde vazgeçenler. Sonra vücut buldu zihinlerde çaresizlik bana bunu sorup durma yok bir çare belki de. Neyse düşününce kafam karışacak doruklara sevdalanacağız, bir gülüşe kanacağız. Sonra o çocuklar sokaklarda aç yatacak bir düşüne yanacağız, dinleyip de taşta. Onlar dünya görüşünü kazansalar ne olur yan sokakta torba, üst katında fuş. Statüye tapmıyorlar yok cepte bir kuruş, şu bardağı bir doldur da konuşuruz şunu. Nasıl unutulacak bunlar bu insanları izdamdan kopartırken ekmeğini lekeledi gururunu üzdü bizi. O gün bugün küskün kime nafilli hayatlara ben de sustum ürkütmedim. Fazla düşününce kafam karışacak şimdi alacaklar yanımızdan en sevilen kardeşleri. Bir şafak vaktinde silahlara ateşlenir üstümüze yağmur yağar güzel günler düşlenir. Sonra filizlenir ihanet yanı başımızda bir bakmışız biz de su dökmüşüz yıllarca. Hegemonyasından kurtulanlar travmanın harcayacak ömrünü sevdikleri uğruna. Sonra kapanacak tüm şarkılar ve yasaklanacak tüm şarkılar. Üstümüze kalacak, üste üstün alçaklarda bundan ne mal ancak. Özgürlük uzak, sevda dört duvara kazanacak. 
Elbet hatırlanacak onlar hüznümüze ortak olup sonra yoktan var olacak sorun ne oldu? Güzel insanların hepsi gitti şimdi yani kağırda olacak yolum. Ağır olacak sorun. Biz bunların böyle olmasını istemedik. Mecbur kaldık ve kimse bizi dinlemedi. Çünkü hayat zaten yeterince kasvetliydi. Biz insanların kaçtığını önlerine getirdik ve geldik. Son sözüne gerçeğin. Yalan dedim hepsi unut gitsin birden pislik miyiz biz dedi. Sonra silah istedi. Üstümüze düşmemişti o işlerin hiçbiri ancak gülsünler istedik biz. Tutuklandık akabinde sebepsiz. İşte o gün ilk kez karışmıştı kafam olmaz böyle yok dedim. Bana böyle anlatmadın dedi. Koridorlar inledi. Ne olur ne olmaz dur dedim gitti. İşte o gün bitti sevda. Hiçbir pankart anlatmadı. Hiçbir zaman yaşananı asla. Gözlerimde yazdan kışı aynı doğa. Müzik değil acılardır evrensel olan. Teşekkür ederim. Millions of youngsters they find their feelings in these words. And now here comes a Zebek dance video. It's a dance peculiar to Western Anatolia, and the term Zebek signifies resistance and bravery. Please. Dökülür yapraklar Bize de derler çakıcı Yar fidan boylum Yakarız konaklar Tefem vur dizin üstte boncuk gibi alnına düştü parlar teni So now we have a Jetemer Kuran who is a vivid defender of living together and also the Freedom of expression. Uh, let's watch the message coming from Ejem. Hayal etmek deniz şehirlerinin kaderidir. Hayal etmek anlamanın ve anlam yaratmanın büyük kız kardeşidir. Bugün dünyayı anlamak ve anlamlandırmak için kullandığımız düşüncenin tohumlarının tam da bu şehirde benim şehrim İzmir'de atılmış olması tesadüf değil. Çünkü Akdeniz'in kızı İzmir, Homeros'tan beri çok güzel. İzmir, insanoğlunun insana ve güzelliğe inancının başkentlerinden biri. Ve bugün, 21. yüzyılın ilk yarısında, dünyanın her yerinden kültür insanlarıyla kültür zirvesinin İzmir'de yapılıyor olması bana, bize çok şey söylüyor. Dünyada bugün bütün ülkelerin etkilendiği, Hepimizin öyle ya da böyle maruz kaldığı bir çöküş yaşanıyor. Radikal sağ politikalar önce siyaset sonra da kültür kurumlarına saldıran örgütlü bir cehaleti harekete geçiriyor. Bu siyasal barbarlık hayatın her noktasında kendi insan doğa ve güzellik karşıtı kültürünü egemen kılmaya çalışıyor. 
Biz İzmir'de, Türkiye'de şunu öğrendik. Ancak kadim şehirler kendi kültürlerinin etrafında kenetlenerek bu saldırıya direnebilirler. İzmir bugün insandan ve güzellikten yana bir direnişin model şehirlerinden biri. Yakın gelecekte dünyanın bütün kadim şehirlerinin tıpkı benim şehrim gibi doğayı, insanı ve kültürü korumak için benzer şekilde davranacağını göreceğiz. Başka bir çaremizin olmadığını en çok geçtiğimiz son bir yılda fark ettik. Geçtiğimiz son bir yılda pandemi ve yaşadığımız kapanma bize en çok şunu öğretti. Bizim tanımadığımız insanlara da ihtiyacımız var. İnsanoğlunun kalabalıkların aktığı sokaklara, hakkında hiçbir şey bilmediği insanların doldurduğu meydanlara ihtiyacı var. Kalabalıklar ise şehrin icadıdır. Dayanılmaz yalnızlığımız bize şunu öğretti. Şehirlere ihtiyacımız var. Ve son bir yılda gördük ki her şey dursa bile şehirdeki insanın kalbini attıran şey kültür ve sanat. Pencerelerden tek tek söylenen şarkılar, balkonlardan okunan şiirler ve bunları hep beraber yapmaya olan ihtiyacımız insanoğlunu kurtaracak tek şeyin güzellik olduğunu bize 21. yüzyılın bu başında bir kere daha hatırlattı. Kültür ve sanatın lüks bir tüketim maddesi değil, insanın temel ihtiyacı olduğunu içinden geçtiğimiz tarih bize bir kere daha gösterdi. İnsana olan inancımızı temelinden sarsan bu yüzyılda kırganlığımızı ve gücümüzü bize yine kültür insanları anlattı. Ve son olarak, ben İzmir'de büyüdüm. Eko'nun ne olduğunu Efes Antik Tiyatrosu'nda öğrenen şanslı çocuklardan biriyim. Güzelliği ve dirençli neşesiyle meşhur İzmir kadınları arasında büyüdüm. Dünyanın en güçlü ordularına karşı verilen bağımsızlık savaşına katılan milislerin torunuyum. Ve savaşın birbirinden ayırdığı bu şehrin insanlarının şarkılarını başka başka dinlerde dinleyerek büyüdüm. Rakı içmeyi, direnmeyi ve sevmeyi Mare Nostrum'un bu kıyısında öğrendim. Homeros'un hikaye anlatıcısı torunlarından biri olarak sizleri İzmir'e buyur etmekten onur duyuyorum. Thank you. Now we have a um, video on Rebetiko music, uh, which melts heart of the people living in the both sides of the Aegean Sea. Um, it brings us together. It brings Greek and Turkish people closer together. Rebetiko, thank you. Please watch. Sarı 
μέτρησα μια ώρα για να ζήσει και σ' αρεπέτησα μια ώρα για να ζήσει Sekurler, thank you very much, dear Onur. As you can see, wonderful messages, wonderful performances from Izmir. Let me let me uh, recall that in uh, the previous summits, we have always done something together, and this is what makes our life uh, unique. This is what make the events we are uh, living something uh, invaluable, something that is kept for us in our memories forever. Uh, we can guarantee that uh, those coming to Izmir will have unforgettable moments of doing things together, either playing music or dancing or doing all, also uh, other cultural activities. Um, a month ago, UCLG released a video explaining an ima in images in some nice words, the uh, place of culture as an antidote for the crisis in plural. I, I forgot to, to, to call this video at the beginning of this block, uh, but now this is the right moment to, to, to again uh, watch this video uh, uh, in this in this UCLG uh, launch of the summit of Izmir, so please, colleagues, if you can if you can now play the video of culture as an antidote, please. Culture is the antidote for the secondary effects of the current and all crisis. Many of us have been involved in spontaneous cultural activities across the world to mourn those that have left, to forge engagement and togetherness, to identify new energies, and to create new expressions that help us overcome limitations. During the pandemic, we have visited museums and orchestras have played from our homes. Balconies have lit up to imagine a new future as one humanity. Cities and territories around the world are cradles of culture, heritage, diversity, knowledge, and innovation. Culture makes people feel, dream, and create. Culture makes cities thrive. There are strong avenues that connect culture with the challenges humanity is facing. We need to address our relationship with nature and Mother Earth. We need to heal the conflicts of the past and build cities of peace. We need to be engaged to achieve gender equality. Acknowledging that the beauty and pleasure that culture brings to us is critical for the welfare of our societies. Culture is essential for societies that care for all. We need to ensure that people everywhere discover cultural roots of all, create new expressions, 
share resources, enjoy creativity, protect the freedoms of all. This will guarantee the nexus between generations, United cities and local governments, an equality-driven movement, is committed to a pact for the future, powered by culture. Because culture connects people. Because culture saves the planet. Then, governments need to protect and promote culture. Yes, great video. This is a, an outstanding summary of how culture is shaping the, the future. And uh, those participating in the UCLG summit in Izmir will uh, leave this uh, feeling together. Let's now uh, go to the, to the final block of this uh, launch of the summit with speeches from our members from UCLG members, including UCLG Culture Committee members, and also a special message from the UCLG MIWA uh, section. Um, we are going now from, from uh, east to west, and it is uh, a pleasure to call now the governor of Jeju, Mr. Won Hee Ryong, to uh, say a few words to the uh, audience and, and uh, you, you realize that in Jeju is now night so the governor uh, has uh, recorded a video for us which now we will play the video please 여러분 안녕하십니까 대한민국 제주 특별자치도지사 원희룡입니다 대한민국의 형제국가인 터키 이즈마르시에서 2021 UCLG 문화정상회의가 열리게 되어 무척 기쁩니다. 코로나19 팬데믹을 비롯해 많은 어려움 속에서도 뜻깊은 자리를 마련해 주신 UCLG 월드 에밀리아 사이즈 위원장님과 터키 이즈마르시 무스타마 텅 소여 시장님 모하메드 부드라 UCLG 회장님께 감사드립니다. 문화예술은 자연과 공존하며 세월을 견뎌낸 삶의 지혜가 담긴 온 인류의 자산입니다. 또한 문화예술은 세계 각국의 시민과 도시를 연결하는 통로이자 지속가능한 도시를 일구는 원동력입니다. 문화예술은 모두의 일상을 평화롭고 행복하게 만드는 위대한 힘을 지니고 있습니다. 2017년 문화예술의 섬 제주에서 열렸던 제2회 UCLG 문화정상회의를 기억합니다. 문화예술의 가치와 중요성을 공유하고 각국의 경험과 지혜를 나누며 인류의 공동 번영을 위한 국제적 협력을 다짐했습니다. 지금 우리가 경험하고 있는 코로나19 팬데믹은 세계 시민의 연대와 국제사회 협력의 중요성을 일깨우고 있습니다. 여러분께 다시 한번 호소합니다. 세계 지방정부 간 성숙한 연대와 협력은 세계적 위기를 극복하고 지속 가능한 미래를 여는 고귀한 행동입니다. 오는 9월 열리는 2021 UCLG 문화정상회의가 인류의 평화로운 공존과 번영을 위한 혁신적 아이디어와 집단적 지혜를 공유하는 구심점이 되길 기대합니다. 제주도는 UCLG 문화정상회의의 성공 개최를 위해 여러분과 함께 하겠습니다. 다시 만나는 그날까지 모두 건강하시고 행복하십시오. 예술원과 창작의 열정으로 온 인류를 하나로 연결해 주시는 지구촌 모든 문화예술인께 감사드립니다. Thank you very much, dear governor. 감사합니다. This was in uh, 2017, in May 2017, when uh, the UCLG Culture Summit took place in Jeju. Now it is our pleasure to invite Mr. Nidai Gungordu, Mayor of Kirenia and President of the Committee on Culture and Tourism of UCLG Mewa to take the floor. Mr. Gungordu. Evet, öncelikle herkese e, Kıbrıs'tan e, Girne'den selam ve sevgilerimi ileterek konuşmama başlıyorum. Tabii ki bütün dünya e, önemli bir 
salgınla karşı karşıyadır. Ve dolayısıyla gerek şehirdeki yöneticilerin, yerel yönetimlerin, e, gerekse ülke bazında hükümetlerin önceliklerinde farklılıklar oluşmuştur. E, bu nedenle ben öncelikle bu kültür zirvesini e, Kültür ve Turizm Komisyon Başkanı olarak, dönem başkanı olarak çok önemsediğimi, e, şehir halkı olarak, belediye meclisi olarak çok önemsediğimizi e, söyleyerek konuşmama başlamak isterim. E, sevgili İzmir Büyükşehir Belediye Başkanımız Sayın Tunç Soyer'e böylesi güzel bir organizasyona ev sahipliği yaptığı için şahsım ve belediyem adına kendisine teşekkür ederim. Tabii ki e, kültür ve sanat birbirinden ayrılan iki mevhum değildir. E, kültürün olduğu yerde sanat, sanatın olduğu yerde kültür e, oluşur ve yaratılır. Dolayısıyla ben de var olan kültür miraslarımızı korumak, geliştirmek, dünyadaki diğer insanlarla bunları paylaşmak, e, güzel kentimiz Girne'de var olan eski eserleri ve kültür varlıklarını e, insanlarla paylaşmak, dünya insanlarıyla paylaşmak bizim için önemlidir. Biz tabii ki küçük bir adayız Akdeniz'de. Ancak bütün ada ülkelerinde olduğu gibi Akdeniz'de uğrak noktadaki bu adamız da çok değerli kültür mirasına sahip bir e, ülkeyiz, bir kentiz. E, dolayısıyla bu anlamda e, kültürün e, dünya için ortak bir miras olduğunu, kültür varlığının nerede olduğunun çok önemi olmadığını, bütün insanların bir mirası olduğunu e, gördüğümüzü e, da bu şekilde ifade etmek isterim. Tabii ki burada fikirler konuşulacak, fikirler paylaşılacak ve somut olarak insanlık için kültür ve sanat anlamında nasıl e, politikalar e, oluşturacağımızı hep birlikte e, karar vereceğiz. E, deneyimlerimizi paylaşacağız. E, yerel yönetimlerin bu konuda daha aktif olabilmesi için neler yapılabilir onları paylaşacağız. Ve tabii ki e, en önemlisi e, bence sanatın ve kültürün birleştirdiği gücünden yararlanmamız lazım. Bu dönemde de buna çok büyük miktarda, çok büyük oranda ihtiyacımız vardır. İnsanlığı bir araya getirmek ve tabii ki e, belki sonunda söylemem gereken bir şeyi şimdi sizlerle paylaşayım. Sanatın ve e, kültürün olduğu yerde sevgi vardır, hoşgörü vardır ve mutlaka bu duygularla yetişen ve yaşayan insanların barışa özlemleri ve e, barışla ilgili duyarlılıkları vardır. Dolayısıyla yerel yönetimlerin bugün içinde bulundukları durumdan e, gerek şehirlerdeki insanları bu anlayışla kucaklamak e, veya dünyadaki insanlarla kucaklaşırken kültürün ve sanatın önemini ön plana çıkararak dünya insanlarıyla kucaklaşmak en büyük arzumuzdur. Dolayısıyla bu ortak e, noktada buluşabildiğimiz için böylesi güzel bir organizasyon için e, ben de bunun bir parçası olabildiğim e, nedeniyle de çok mutlu olduğumu ifade etmek isterim. Ve yerel yönetimlerin dünya kültüründe şehir bazında özellikle üzerinde durmak istediğim şehir bazında kültür ve sanat anlamında adım atmaları belki bazı politik endişeleri de ortadan kaldıracaktır diye düşünüyorum. Bu nedenle e, dönem başkanı olduğum Turizm ve Kültür Komisyonu'nda e, üzerinde durduğumuz önemli konulardan biri de şehirlerin ön plana çıkarak e, ülke tanıtımına e, katkıda bulunmalarıdır. Ve bu anlayışla e, ben tekrardan sanatın ve kültürün birleştirdiği gücüne kesinlikle inandığımı, özellikle bu dönemde buna çok büyük ihtiyacımız olduğunu tekrardan e, belirtirim. Tabii ki yerel anlamda yapabileceklerimiz küçük küçük noktaları birleştirerek, küçük küçük nüveleri birleştirerek küresel anlamda da dünyada sevgi, hoşgörü ve barış için önemli bir e, adımların başlangıcıdır diye e, düşünüyorum. Bu nedenle e, bu e, sahip olduğumuz kültürel varlıkları bugünkü durumundan e, bunlar tabii ki yazılı metinler, eski eserler, e, devraldığımız bir sürü e, yazılı metin, kitap, roman her neyse yani her türlü e, geçmişe yönelik varlıkları gelecek nesillere de aktarmak bizim en temel e, görevimizdir diye 
düşünüyorum. Ben de e, tekrardan bütün konuşmacılar için İzmir'de buluşabileceğimiz e, umuduyla herkesi e, Kıbrıs'tan, Girne'den e, sıcak dolusu sevgilerle kucaklıyorum. E, hayırlı olmasını diliyorum, başarılı geçmesini diliyorum ve herkesi ama herkesi sevgiyle kucaklıyorum. Çok teşekkür ederim. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor Gungordu, Mayor of Kirenia. Step by step, let let me say that the the the, the committee that you uh, chair was the one, the first uh, committee on culture that a UCLG section put in place. Now there are, there are there is another one in Asia Pacific, in uh, chaired by Jeju, by the way. And it seems there will be another one in another section uh, very soon. So a step by a step, this 17 year old organization, UCLG is uh, becoming more and more structured, uh, stronger and, and uh, with great success in the field of culture. Certainly we will meet all in in Izmir in September. Uh, from east to west, now it's the turn of Bilbao, the place of the first UCLG Culture Summit, 2015, March 2015. Uh, the mayor uh, will now uh, be uh, in your screens. Unfortunately, today, the mayor had exactly at this uh, moment an important meeting of the Municipal Council. So he recorded a video for us. Please, colleagues, if you can play the video. Buenos días. Como alcalde de Bilbao es para mí un honor y un placer participar en esta sesión de lanzamiento de la cuarta cumbre de cultura de CGLU que tendrá lugar en septiembre en la incomparable ciudad de Izmir. En 2015 celebramos en Bilbao la primera edición de la cumbre en la que debatimos sobre los derechos culturales y los valores intrínsecos de la cultura para el desarrollo. Allí aprobamos oficialmente el documento Cultura 21, acciones, que sirve de guía práctica para la aplicación de la Agenda 21. Con el hilo conductor de la cultura como cuarto pilar del desarrollo sostenible, la cumbre ha celebrado otras exitosas ediciones en Yeyú y Buenos Aires. Y en breve, ese recorrido llegará a Izmir, que tomará el testigo y que a buen seguro va a reeditar y superar el éxito de los tres encuentros anteriores. Del 9 al 11 de septiembre, todas las miradas del mundo de la cultura estarán puestas en esta perla del Mediterráneo. En Izmir vamos a debatir sobre cómo la cultura define el futuro de las sociedades. Es un momento crucial para este debate. La COVID-19 ha tenido y está teniendo duras consecuencias para nuestras sociedades. Obviamente, la pérdida de vidas humanas está siendo la parte más cruel de la pandemia con todo el dolor que ello conlleva. Pero también estamos viendo sus consecuencias negativas en el ámbito cultural. La imposibilidad sanitaria de celebrar espectáculos y especialmente espectáculos en vivo, el cierre de equipamientos, la pérdida de movilidad internacional y de turismo cultural han generado una crisis sin precedentes en nuestro sector cultural a la que debemos hacer frente. No obstante, la COVID-19 ha tenido un efecto positivo. Nos ha hecho darnos cuenta de la importancia de la cultura a la que hemos recurrido como tabla de salvación en estos momentos difíciles. En plena pandemia hemos sido conscientes de que la cultura nos une y nos da sentido, mejora la vida de las personas y de las sociedades. Son muchas las incógnitas que se plantean sobre qué nos deparará la nueva sociedad pospandemia. Pero contamos con una certeza. Sin una decidida apuesta por la cultura, no será posible hacer frente a los retos que tenemos por delante. En este contexto, las ciudades y los gobiernos locales jugamos un papel clave. Ciudades como Bilbao, Yeyú, México, Lisboa, Buenos Aires o Izmir, que participamos activamente en la Comisión de Cultura de CGLU como ciudades líderes o ciudades piloto, jugamos con ventaja. 
Ya tenemos el pleno convencimiento de la necesidad y el valor de la cultura. Lo demostramos en nuestro día a día, haciendo que las políticas culturales ocupen un rol de centralidad. Tenemos que redoblar los esfuerzos para transmitir esa idea a las demás ciudades. La semilla ya está sembrada. A ciudades como las nuestras nos corresponde regar esta semilla para que siga creciendo y continuemos dando visibilidad a la cultura sostenible. Y para ello, eventos como esta cumbre son fundamentales. Toda cumbre es un espacio de reunión, reflexión e intercambio. Y dónde mejor para conectarse y para compartir nuestras experiencias que en Izmir. Porque Izmir es ante todo una ciudad de conexiones, encrucijada de culturas y civilizaciones, confluencia de ideas, espacio cosmopolita diverso y plural, paraíso de la biodiversidad. Todo eso y más es Izmir, una ciudad abierta que comparte con Bilbao su carácter de ciudad portuaria y su apuesta por transformarse en ciudad de la cultura, las artes, el diseño y la innovación. Nadie dice que el futuro vaya a ser fácil, pero no cabe duda de que la mejor manera de avanzar es hacerlo juntos. La colaboración entre ciudades es la única vía para salir adelante. En buena medida y con todas nuestras diferencias que nos enriquecen, las ciudades que integramos CGLU compartimos muchos problemas. Trabajemos juntos para compartir también las soluciones. Izmir es un marco incomparable para continuar tejiendo redes y eso es lo que a buen seguro haremos en septiembre. Por ello, no me queda más que cerrar mis palabras con un profundo agradecimiento hacia las autoridades de Izmir y especialmente a su alcalde, Tung Soyer, así como a la Comisión de Cultura de CGLU por la organización de esta cumbre que lanzamos hoy en este acto. Mis mejores deseos para esta cumbre, que a buen seguro va a ser buena para Izmir y buena para la cultura. Es que ricasco, alcalde Aburto. Uh, thank you very much, dear, dear mayor. The seed that UCLG and Bilbao planted in 2015 is growing nicely and strong. Um, now the turn is for Catarina Vaspinto. Uh, Councillor for Culture of Lisbon, uh, co-president of the UCLG Culture Committee. Katarina, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, I would like to, gree to greet uh, the president of UCLG, Emilia Sainz, the mayor of Iz Izmir, and to, and to thank you for the organizing of this meet, this, uh, this summit that uh, I hope to be able to participate in September. It will sh for sure be a very important meeting place for us all. Uh, in Lisbon now, we, as it, all over the world, the, the, the, the pandemic has had a very negative effect on the, the cultural sector. For the moment, the cultural venues are still, um, can open only in, uh, with half of its capacity. And the outdoors events also have a lot of res some restrictions. Uh, the vaccination process is going very well, and there is no not so much pressure on hospitals. But uh, the number of cases is again increasing in mainly in Lisbon, and so the authorities are very ca cautious. And uh, uh, when uh, cultural agents were ho hoping to open up, the, that the rules would open up in the summer that is not uh, happening and so there is a lot of uncertainty uncertainty and we are well we are waiting and hope hoping that uh, cases uh, go down again and hopefully uh, what we have done in during the pandemic was uh, uh, first, on the one hand, to work in the short term, finding the solutions to guarantee the mere survival of people, of organization and institutions. We've increased funding to, through emergency, emergency funds, uh, not only to our traditional reci recipients that, uh, that are this, the not-for-profit not sector, but also the commercial cultural sector, like father houses, grassroots music venues, centenary theaters, historical shops, galleries, art galleries, independent shops, some of them representing the core identity of the city, others we've considered essential for all the cultural ecosystem. At the same time, we felt we needed to keep our goals and we conquered ground in advocating for the importance of the cultural sector in itself 
and for the economy, employment, and social well-being. In the most complicated months, we've tried to, in all, all our organizations and institutions, to keep access to culture by our citizens, not only through digital ways, but also to more analogical and physical ways, like reading poetry uh, by phone to more elderly people in Casa Fernando Pessoa, or delivering books uh, at people's home in a, in a special service created by the libraries, uh, by our libraries network. Um, the future is it's very uncertain in all in very dimensions. I, I truly believe that culture will shape our future and, uh, and that there is a growing awareness for the general ordinary public of the importance uh, for culture. And I believe this is a positive um, consequence. If there is, we can find out, uh, talk about positive results of the pandemic. But uh, in that, uh, one of the things I would like, uh, uh, in order for culture to shape our future, I think one of the main questions and that I would like to, that uh, we could discuss in the summit in Izmir, is about the economic sustainability of the cultural sector uh, in, in a whole. Not only what uh, in what uh, relates to the conditions of the artists and all the cultural agents, because what we have seen, uh, I think also in all over the world is how fragile and how is the, are the labor conditions of all the people that work in, in, in the cultural area. Uh, and so how precarious are all the jobs and how uncertain, and we, I think we have to find a new legal system to protect work conditions of the people, but also how we can we improve through technology and digital solutions, their uh, payment, also concerning the author's right, and also how we can create new business models through, through digital uh, technologies. Um, on the other hand, I, I mean, uh, I think uh, pub, one of the big questions is how the, the public system will keep to its investment in the cultural sector, because we know that uh, the, the demands are very big uh, and there, there will, we will need a, a big advocacy to maintain and even to, to grow and raise the, the investment in the cultural area. And uh, for instance, in, uh, in our country, one of the questions that remains uh, very crucial for me is the balance between the not-for-profit sector and the commercial sector, because mainly in this commercial sector that lives, that has been living on big audiences, on, on, on tourism, we don't know what will happen in the future, not only because of the sanitary restrictions, we don't know for how long they will keep, but also when we add to these some the issues of the climate agenda, for instance, uh, not so many traveling, uh, not uh, so many uh, ecological, not so many, so high levels of, cons of, cons of consumption. How does this uh, balance with the, the level of uh, income that this the commercial sector is used to? And how, for instance, the to the what will happen to, to tourism in Lisbon? This is a particular uh, difficult question because the city depended too much. Uh, we now think on the tourism income. And so we will have to rebalance these, these, uh, these, um, these uh, activities with others that can always also um, be capable of generating income and employment and uh, for everyone. So uh, I think I I think also the cooperation international movement of artists is, it will be a very important question to to face. And so I will think these with others uh, very interesting themes for sure will be uh, discussed in Izmir. And again, I want to congratulate all of you and uh, Jordi Pascual and its fantastic team in Barcelona for organizing all this discussion for us. Thank you very much. Muito obrigado, Catarina. Thank you very much. We take note of the issues that are at uh, the priority 
uh, in, in Lisbon, as in many other cities all around the world. We will discuss about uh, these in uh, Izmir. Uh, I have to apologize now. Uh, the Secretary for Culture of Mexico City, co-president of UCLG Culture Committee. Unfortunately, she cannot be with us today. But it is my pleasure to invite Enrique Abogadro, Minister for Culture of Buenos Aires, co-president of UCLG Culture Committee, host of the third UCLG Culture Summit in April 2019. Enrique, you have the floor. Muchas gracias, Jordi. Eh, un, un gusto volver a verlo. Hola, Emilia. Un placer. It's really a pleasure to, to be in touch again. I have saudades uh, because I, I really remember what a great summit that we had in our city in Buenos Aires, and that was because of all of you, basically. <laughs> that you managed to came down to our city to come down to our city and and we we all together had such an extraordinary summit thank you for to CG to UCLG because we are proud members of of our commission and um, my greetings also to the mayor of Izmir and congratulations on organizing this next uh, summit um, as Katarina was uh, mentioning, our city also had to go through uh, uh, very tough times through COVID-19. It was, and it still is, really difficult because our cultural sector, our cultural ecosystem, as it is in the rest of the world, had to bear uh, this crisis. Uh, and uh, we finally, uh, understood that the cultural sector is really weak in terms of its social cohesion, in terms of uh, its informality. And I think that there we have one of our main challenges ahead for sure. Um, through all this very long year and a half, we've been dealing with different ways of helping the cultural sector through different grant schemes and other uh, activities. We also try to keep the cultural sector open to the citizens in general. And that's why we launched several platforms. One of them called Vivamos Cultura, which is um, an, an streaming online platform where we are running several bilateral projects with uh, uh, the culture uh, committee uh, cities. And also we are running this uh, agreement with our colleagues in the city of Mexico and inviting other cities to take part of this exchange opportunities, learning from what's happening in our cities. We also had a, a summer in the Southern hemisphere. We already went through summer, so we could sort of rehearse some sort of going back to normal in terms of culture. We had our theaters open, our movie theaters open, our musical venues. We organized many activities uh, in the outside. We even discovered new places as uh, cultural venues like streets and parks and, and other open air places. And then we had to go back to uh, since we had our, our second wave of COVID-19 and we had to, we, we went back inside. Through all this, we learned a lot. We had uh, a constant dialogue with the cultural sector. And, and this brings me to the end of this uh, very short presentation, which is our ideas and proposals for this next uh, summit. We believe that there's a big opportunity in terms of how culture can help us reclaim our cities. COVID attacked directly our cities because it attacked the way that we live, how we gather, how we get together, how we kiss and hug. And culture can be a tool for us to get back, to get back and learn from this experience to understand that the public realm can be activated through culture, 
to understand that we have an opportunity with technology, but technology is not um, a magic pill that will solve everything, that we need to be in touch. So how we reclaim our city, how we get in touch again with the spirit of our cities, I think culture can be a, a very important tool in this discussion. A second uh, theme uh, would be how to build back better through culture, but with everybody on board. And, and this is a, a, a huge challenge in our region because um, the uh, poverty is increasing, inequality is increasing because of all the measures that had to be implemented with COVID-19. And uh, there is no cultural or creative city if, if it's not with everybody on board. So how culture can help us build back, build back better, it's, it's another challenge. And to build back better, we definitely need everybody on board. So culture is not, of course, mainly entertainment, but it's a tool for development. And, and that's really, really important. And the third and last proposal is how we can build a, a stronger and more resilient cultural ecosystem. And I would say that we have three um, uh, probably areas that we can focus on. One is definitely technology and innovation in a general sense. But again, thinking that it's not a magic pill, but definitely that we can uh, sort of get everybody on board in terms of how the, not only the public, but also cultural producers in, in terms of how to use technology. A second area would be engagement, civic engagement, how cultural venues, cultural, the whole cultural ecosystem can be really active in terms of relating itself to their city, to their neighborhoods, to their streets, and sort of build the social arena that we need to get everybody to get talking again and get in touch again. And the third and last would be the future, how we can not, how we can build a better future where we are main characters as cultural, as the cultural ecosystem. How the future is not something that is going to happen, but something that we are going to bring forward. So thank you again for this opportunity to share some thoughts in terms of what our next uh, summit can delve into. And again, it's a real pleasure to see all these friends, uh, all these cities that we've been working together through all these years. And I'm really looking forward to hug you very strongly again. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias y saludos desde Buenos Aires. Los queremos mucho. Muchísimas gracias, Enrique. También desde Barcelona, nuestros mejores deseos. Te queremos mucho. Eh, queremos mucho a la ciudad de Buenos Aires que, que representas. Thank you very much, dear Enrique. Uh, also for the very precise uh, indications on what the Izmir Culture Summit can discuss in September. Um, let me now uh, give the floor to Emilia Saith for the concluding remarks. Emilia, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much, Jordi. What a privilege, what a great gift from Izmir to all of us. It, it has been uh, an amazing uh, launch, actually. Uh, you have made us really feel the, the, the soul of, of Izmir. Uh, we are all looking forward to going there. And, and also um, very, very warm uh, thoughts and words uh, from the previous hosts of this uh, summit. I hope, Mayor Sawyer, you are sensing what an important endeavor you have gotten your city into, how serious it has been for all the previous hosts to uh, hold this uh, UCLG uh, summit and the type of family bonds that we have made uh, with each other and that Caterina Vaspinto and Enrique Abogardo, but also uh, the uh, governor of Yeyu and, and the mayor of Bilbao have shared uh, with us. So um, I really uh, would like to start with this wrap up of this very rich um, 
session, uh, inviting my dear colleague uh, Mehmet Duman, the Secretary General of UCLG MEWA, uh, to share with us some thoughts on what it means for UCLG MEWA to also uh, have this summit held in, in the section. Uh, dear, uh, dear colleague Mehmet Duman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emilia. Distinguished UCLG President Mohamed Boudre, distinguished UCLG Secretary General Emilia Saiz, Honorable Mayor of Izmir Tunç Soyer, dear local government representatives, cultural actors and participants, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin my words by sending my respects and greetings to all the participants from Istanbul, the capital of the greatest civilization, home, home to countless invaluable heritage sites, one of the most vibrant creat creativity hubs in the world, and owner of the title 2010 European Capital of Culture. We are happy that the UCLG Culture Summit, which is held every two years, and is of global importance will be held in Izmir, one of the leading cities of our region. Also, being the UCLG section hosting the event, I would like to express our pleasure for being part of this process. Today, during the open ceremony, we listened to the powerful messages from uh, Ms. Saiz, uh, Mr. Budra, and Mr. Freyer on culture and the role of culture in sustainable development. We followed with interest the fruitful session where Arispe Sako and Serhan Ada discussed culture, knowledge, diversity, and participation in urban life. We have come to the end of the lunch with the final message from the President of UCL Committee on Culture and President of UCL Jamawa Committee on culture and tourism. I would like to thank all the speakers and participants for their contribution and participation. I'd like to express my gratitude and thank to Jordi Pascual and the Secretary of the UCLG Committee on Culture, as well as Izmir Metropolitan Municipality for their efforts to organize this successful lunch. I am glad that we will be working together in, in the organization of the summit. Since 2004, Culture One has been carrying out activities to include culture in the sustainable development agenda. Agenda 21 for Culture has a very valuable agenda containing lectures, reports, workshops, publications, and good practices. The 2020 Rome Charter, which was produced together with the City of Rome and participation of all stakeholders, was also an important part of this agenda. This is we support these efforts and actively carry out activities in this direction through our Committee on Culture and Tourism. We believe that the fourth UCLG Culture Summit which is the, my hometown, will reinforce our co commitments, re-emphasize re re the central role of culture in sustainable development, help us facilitate the coordination between culture and other such as tourism, environment and social inclusion, strengthening the interaction between stakeholders, coming together from different sectors under the common theme of culture. Align all the subtopics of culture, especially heritage and creativity with local agenda. And the most importantly, emphasize the role of culture in shaping the future. I sincerely believe that the fourth UCLG Culture Summit will contribute greatly to all these points I have just mentioned. I hope to see you in Izmir between 
9 and 11th of September and greet all the participants with my heartfelt feeling. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Secretary General. We all uh, do indeed uh, hope to be in Izmir. And part of this new reality that, that, that we are all um, uh, experiencing is that um, we, we know what we miss now from in-person meetings, and we also know the possibilities that uh, technology brings with us. So hopefully we can empower this summit in Izmir by having a lot of participation in Izmir, but also ensuring that there is a strong participation um, virtually and that shows the diversity uh, of our of our membership and the diversity of of the future that that we want as well several times during this launch we have heard that we don't know what the future will bring but there is many things that we know about how we can be happy what it means to have a meaningful life and how important cultural rights and access to culture uh, is in this uh, endeavor. So we are going to explore all of this in Izmir. There are very good ideas that have been left in the chat, uh, concrete proposals uh, from uh, uh, the previous hosts on what we should uh, be focusing on in Izmir. Our teams are working hard uh, to make the summit a success. And the only thing left for me is to uh, emphasize uh, the privilege from our president, Mohamed Boudra, that just left just a minute ago because he had to rush to other meeting to, uh, to have shared these moments uh, with you, uh, Mayor Sawyer. Uh, he's also looking forward to visiting Izmir, so uh, you have his word that he will try to accompany you there and wishes us all the success. I would like also to uh, thank again our colleagues in the MEWA Secretariat, the whole team in Izmir, and in particular, my own team here. Uh, you have heard several times uh, the name of Jordi Pascual, a very critical actor in this endeavor, but he's accompanied by a group of very powerful women that I also want to, uh, to acknowledge. Uh, our dear colleague, Marta Llobet, uh, Sara Bier, and Agnes uh, Ruiz, all of them uh, part of this uh, World Secretariat. We cannot do it without you. Please do join us soon again. Jordi, I think we are done here. We, we just want you to uh, go to Wonder if you want to have a, a, a cup of coffee uh, together and, and share some, some moments uh, with each other. Very last word for you, Jordi, from my end, a lot of hugs virtual and otherwise and thank you again long live Izmir thank you very much Emilia thank you very much for these very generous words see you all now in wonder we will have a cup of coffee cup of tea we can meet uh, have a look to the chat uh, it is very easy to copy and paste and, and we can uh, meet as if we were at the corridors of a UCLG press summit. Uh, thank you again. Goodbye.